and some tough life, guys. We are heading into Redshift because who doesn't like putting Redshift as map one of the best of three every now and then? Apparently not Trav and Gumiho. <laughs> Mad Men. Mad Men at work. <laughs> right with Fly Redshift. What? Yeah. Gumiho is a bit of a madman. I always call I always think of him as like the uh, the the mad scientist Terran where he has like his uh, I I imagine Gumiho you know he's a he, he's a he's a pretty he's a pretty interesting looking fellow and I just imagine him in a in a in a in a lab coat with big like thick bottle rim sunk glasses on and beakers with different colors pouring them into each other some sometimes one turns into gold sometimes it blows up in his face The alchemist, you know. I love it. Guys, to the top left hand side. Not gonna build his barracks in his main base. It is Gumiho. I mean, why would you do that? Taste has talked about it already on the broadcast of GSL. It's really falling out of fashion to make any of your structures back at home. Yeah. And in the bottom left, representing Junior Green Wings, this is Trap. Who would have known that after so long, it turns out the best strategy is actually just to build everything outside of your main? Yeah, that's right. So both, uh, we got Gumiho down two series, Trap has won one series and lost one series. So Trap sitting pretty up there with Zest in top two of this group so far. Alive also uh, one and one. Yeah, so I mean, this is like if Trap wins, I guess if Trap wins and Alive wins, then it's a two one tiebreaker, right? And it comes down to map score. Mm -hmm. That's when mm -hmm. maps, that's when Zest having lost some map to Gumiho could come into play. Hmm. Interesting. Well, Zest is looking looking around here, seeing if there's any structures that he missed, but nope, he got them all. That's the whole main there of Gimiho. Yep, he did not see anything. This is not a fake uh, proxy barracks. This is a real life proxy barracks being proxied right now with the Reaper on the way out. So, looks as though the SCV's heading back home, though. So, looks as though there's no shenanigans beyond this Reaper. Just the Reaper into the factory at home. Uh, still hiding the factory, though, so the probe, if it just doesn't quite go to the back here. If he doesn't quite see the factory, it still might make him think like, oh my god, you proxied a factory too, you know? And that could uh, make Trap be a little bit safer than he actually needs to be in this scenario. Yeah, certainly. Oh, we'll see how much this Reaper can get done yeah, up in the main there of Trap. Not a whole lot just yet. Factory going to be... One of those... Soon to finish. This is one of those following the probe situations. Oh! The Reaper there of Gumiho just manages to juke on that Adept. Still alive. Zero kills to its name, though. Hasn't really paid off for it yet. Yeah, but has delayed the expansion from coming down, right? So it puts it into this weird kind of one base scenario again. Mm hmm. Interesting. Again, if Gumiho wins the series, he'll be one and two and so will Trap, right? So then it comes down yep. to if Alive loses, he'll also be one and two. And that's another tiebreaker scenario we could have, which would come down to map score. Man. And head-to-head uh, -head as well, right? Yeah, I actually don't know the exact it... rules for Alima League. So. Yeah. Oh, home, home Story Cup was the last round Robin I saw, and that was the head-to-head -head was the sort of... Every round Robin I've seen this year, I think it was a WESG did one. Um, home Story Cup did one, and that and the head-to-head -head in the end was like the, the decider a lot of the times. But... Yeah. This is only four players, so it's a lot easier. Well, I'm just going to leave it to the admin to tell us what the scenarios are after this series. Be like, yep. okay, if this happens, this. If that happens, that. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. It's all on you, Olivia. <laughs> yeah. We're not here to do <laughs> maths. We're here to cast. Yeah, we don't do math on stream. Unless it's really we easy math. Time, but... We did it one time. Yeah, like two plus two. I'm good with two plus two. I'm good with like subtraction. It wasn't even two plus two. It was two is greater than one. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> Uh, when we start when we start using lesser than and greater than, and it's a lot easier than you know addition subtractions. I'm certainly never going to do any division. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. Division on the stream? Are you kidding me? If yeah, you have eight I'm, like, I'm not trying to do. To I can't even do long division with. A, I can't even do long division with a pen and paper, mate. How am I going to do it right here on stream with a microphone? It's not going to happen. I mean, how do you do any math with a microphone? Widow Mines are gonna get a couple of kills at least. 4 12. <laughs> wow. wow. Unfortunate. Now, yeah. the medevac will go down with the Widow Mines inside of it because of the Phoenixes here. The two Widow Mines do escape, but only for so long because they've already shot their charge. They've been detected. So, an A move from Trap will get rid of them, but 
That is definitely worth it for Gumiho. That was a lovely mine harassment. Especially off the back of having delayed the Nexus originally, right? Because now it's not like Trap was already on a decent niche economy. He was like on a bit of a crappy economy. Oh, this is nice. They're going to drop these Widow Mines down because of the Phoenix chasing around. We'll get enough Burrow to be able to uh, force the Phoenix to have to back away. Phoenix will tank one shot. They can tank a Widow Mine shot. Just only yeah, one. they take one shot and they get very deep in the red. But, uh, but they live, and that's the most important part. And that gold base, no turrets, so he can, you know, potentially lift up some of these SUVs. But he's very, very low on Phoenix energy, actually, because he's been lifting quite a bit. Cliff Banshee on the way up right now. There's one Oracle currently being made. Trap doesn't exactly know what's going on, but nice to see him building an Oracle, because without that Oracle, this game just ends in the very near future. But it's still possible the Oracle uses its energy badly, or not, you know, doesn't save for Revelation. And then, the Banshees, of course, still could get some damage done. Absolutely. Phoenix is coming in here with a bit more energy. going to lift up an SCV. Or if we go straight for the Mule. Nicely done. Yeah, fresh Mule as well. Only had one trip uh, in it so far, so... There's actually a lot of value found right there. As Phoenix... Ooh, hoo, hoo. Now very much oh, so in the red. Oh. And that's dangerous. Second mm -hmm. Oracle being built, though. I love this. Trap's just really covering his bases, making sure he's not going to be caught off guard. Trap was known back in the day, a couple of years back, as the Wing Commander. And this game's certainly sort of giving him that old moniker back with a lot of... A lot of Stargate ruling the map here. That's just triple Oracle. Phoenix gonna die if they go into that Wooden Mine on the Watchtower. They just turned around in time for the moment. Yeah. The Wooden Mine can't see weird. any of it because of the uh, line of sight. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah. This is very annoying for Gumiho, and this is really the weakness of this gold base here on on uh, on Redshift. Oh, I think yeah. uh, Forty Seven has mentioned that this map should be renamed Fool's Gold. Fool's Gold. Yeah. It's. Uh, it's brilliant. It's a bit of a tough one. I mean, in the end, the tank will push this away. You can get back to mine, but now Oracle's in the main base, and Gummy Ho really isn't ready for this. I really think, like, Gummy Ho's building up for, like, one big push, like, with combat shields even, because he didn't build Stim. But obviously, that's being delayed by all of this uh, pressure that keeps on coming down. I feel like now he actually has to go for this, because, you know, the Oracle's yeah. just did so much damage. If he doesn't push now, what's he even waiting for? What does he have to... You know, what gets better for him here? I mean, he he has the gold, which I guess is better, so he has that extra bit of mineral income, and his workers aren't super far behind on traps, but with that third Nexus finishing up, that's definitely going to take a turn for the worse here. Finally, this Widow Mine gets to go off. It took a while. Yeah, he gets a Stalker. Yeah. And something, tank in position as well, again, pushing those Stalkers back. And the Banshee finally on its way around. I mean, the Oracles, in the end, one of them got used aggressively. The other two at home right now don't have energy. Kino. I think they just killed one Banshee. Kino. In fact, two Banshees died already. Wow. Gumiho, mate, cancel that plus one attack and get Stim. What's the matter with you? Yeah, it's why wouldn't you have Stim? Is he forgetting that he went combat shields attack. first? I think so. There it is. Out of boy. Little bit late, but better late than never. Great revelation here stops the Banshee from doing any damage at all. Yeah, Stim finally on the way. So this means that Gumiho is really going to be for quite a while here without the real ability to uh, to make this work to micro or be aggressive. Yeah. Very, very tough. I mean, at least he has combat shields, right? Which is something, but... Never Banshee gets found here. These oracles continue to dominate this sort of position as we do see Phoenix being pushed away and Gumiho is coming down into the center and he will see himself... Yeah, one oracle. Oh. Very nearly going Fine, down, but not And now he's revelated, so now every move he makes is being tracked by the Prowse player. Yeah. He sees these tanks as well with the medevac and... Looks like Gumiho is heading uh, through this position here, just to make sure that Zest doesn't have a gold. The Watchtower does see if a gold is in, in position there. Uh, can actually even see if it's building on the way. It's a very, very good, important Watchtower to have. And Gumiho is moving through, but this one tank sort of sitting at the back here, working on a pylon, and it's not here with this push. That's not what it's he needs. It's very weak to being lifted off and killed by the Phoenixes. He's actually expanding behind this as well, Gumiho, so he's not completely all in with this, but... Well, I mean, I guess he needs not to be, because it isn't... I mean, it's a good army, but, you know, there's still no plus one. There's still no stim. It's not necessarily just going to end the game. Let's see where the tanks can get to. Say support comes down to help protect on the left-hand side. I, mean, I think just sees like that tank Yeah, I think it's good. This is right a very now. nice spot on the tanks. Maybe at stim right now. This next draw nexus might just be dead, but it's not done for another 20 seconds or so. So it's a little while longer to wait. The Zealots have just now gotten charged. They're going to start coming in. The Phoenix lift up the siege tanks. Taking them out of the equation. He targets down the Phoenix, though, so you can get the tanks dropped back down here. As we'll see, Trap is just not quite able to have enough, but it's only pure Marine left over, so they're not that scary on their own, surely. 
Uh, they have plus one attack and they almost have stim. So maybe they can shave off a bunch of these stalkers before they die. And it looks like they're going to do that. Yeah. They are very little hit point stalkers. There's that stim. Maybe even a sentry kill as well. Wow. And that's damage here with that reinforcement tank going from the north. I just missed that. Uh, Gumiho gets himself the first map win here against Trap. Giving himself alive in this round robin group. That's right. But I'm Same. actually very, very excited for his versus alive. I think it's going to be oh, a real yeah. cracker. It should be great. Like, yeah. Like yes, we're having the same matchup over and over again, but you uh, you're getting some it. of the best the best players of these particular races. Like they are really fantastic. Yeah, that's uh, pretty great. All right, Maynard, take us away. Wardy, it is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce the first player here in game two of this best of three. It is Junior Greenwings' trap. And to the top left hand side, our blue turn player. Gumiho. Gimme God. Gimme God. Turn it Solid up win there the on Redshift. Yeah. That's not bad at all. Bad I quite all. liked... Um, I, I, I quite liked that push from Gumiho. I saw it on paper and I thought, you know what? No stim. Uh, not that many mana backs. I don't know if this is going to get the job done. I wouldn't do it myself, but that's why Gumiho is a lot higher rank than I am. We are going to open the same way again. Barracks proxied, and Trap will find it almost instantly here, actually. Feels like he's playing the player rather than the matchup here, but that scout fast from Trap is already a bad start here for Gumiho. Trap has all the information he could possibly need. Yeah, I mean, if he kills the SCV... Uh, Which he will. Oh, well, at least stop this Barracks from finishing. Can cancel Command Center first, maybe? He sends another SCV. Mm -hmm. I guess he has double gas, so you can go and CC wouldn't make too much sense. Oh, this is tough. This isn't pretty at all. Mm. This is real bad. Yeah, a bit of an awkward start here on Catalyst. I thought we were going to have a bit more of a normal game, but... Uh, boy, was I wrong. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the probe denies the barracks, and that delays everything. I mean, obviously, it delays the factory follow-up, and that really weakens Gumiho in terms of being able to defend himself here in the near future, so... Really puts him into this awkward spot. Reaper will now start up as the barracks does get finished. But definitely not looking good at the moment. Ah, oh, that slows down this Reaper so much. Trap already has a Stalker on the way here, and generally that Stalker is out for your first scouting Reaper when it's made at home, let alone yeah. the one you're proxying in front of his face. Yeah. It's, uh... Oh, what a what a weird way to start this off. Uh, you know. oh. Yeah, it is. Uh, he's got a he's got another barracks pack at home. He's gonna get that marine out to be able to shoo away this uh, this uh, um, probe just going up into his main base. And he's gonna get factory back at home. So he kind of has like a, a two one one in terms of structures coming out for him. But it's not obviously has, that stim time. He has that stim one time marine here, against the zealot. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> the oracle is going to be on its way very soon too. A stalk coming across the map. Ah, yeah, is he just dead? Does Gumiho just die? Um. I mean, if he gets a really nice Widowmine connection, maybe if he kills this Oracle with the Widowmine, maybe he can just hold on. But then there's the gateway yeah. units to worry about. So, yeah, this one stalk is a real pain in the ass here for Gumiho. And this is the safest natural Nexus I've ever seen in my whole life. I there's no he, way that he lost down the Zod, anything. Though. I feel like if he still had the Zod, this would be a lot more of an issue with just the Stalker. He's actually able to do this. Huh. Mm. Interesting. Widowmine will burn. He's holding on, and he's looking for the gateway kill with that uh, Widowmine, not looking to protect his mineral line. So the Oracle looks like it could potentially get a few more SCVs here against Gumiho. He is getting that tech lab in that factory, looking like he wants to get tanks as quickly as possible here, along with those Marines. Stop nope, never mind. Stop what? <laughs> These players really don't like you today, do you? Especially Gumiho. No, he really do. doesn't like you. So yeah, no, Gumiho, Gumiho's like, try and cast my game, I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> you want to try and tell me what I'm doing? Get out of here. Yeah, predict what I'm up to, you fucking idiot. Sit down. <laughs> I'm Enjoy NA ladder, you scrub. This is still Please. one base, by the way, from Gumi Ho. It looks as though he will expand now, but it means his expansion is so far behind traps that he really, really has to do something with this main army, right? I mean, he's going to have the Raven. He's going to have siege tanks, I'm assuming, here very soon. I don't think there's a way in which Gumi Ho just sits back and says, yeah, this is fine. I think he has to, to deflect the Oracle and get across the map and try and do some real damage while, you know, gateway counter is low and so on. Because otherwise, I mean, you are you're struggling with this later for command center. 
Double Oracle in the middle line here, and that's a very, very tough thing for Gumiho to deal with. He can potentially auto turret here with the Raven, but the Oracle's very, very fast. Oh, nice micro from Trap. Holy crap. Neither Oracle dying here. He gets four SCVs for free and then just heads back and, and amasses a bit more energy here. He could potentially be a threat again. Oh, this Raven's looking for that auto turret snipe, but yeah, Trap just pulls that out of harm's way. Yeah, I mean, now Gumiho's going to be scared to push across the map because if he pushes across, there's going to be Oracles flying into his base. And if Oracle's flying, he doesn't really have anything to defend them at all, so obviously he's not too great. Daxter, 33, with the 25 months uh, resub, one over two years. Thanks so much for supporting Base Trade TV. Appreciate the subscription. Hello, oh, can't talk. I can't talk when it comes to subscriptions, apparently. What can I say? Thank you for it's a little bit tough. Sorry about that yawn there, it's a little late. I've been up, I've been up quite a while. You've been prepping the good of Valencia. Yeah, that's right. Actually, uh, for all you guys out there in Chatland, I've got to be on a plane in like seven hours. So it's going to be on a short a sleep for Papa Maynard. On a plane uh, in seven hours, that's right. That's brutal. My uh, flight to Valencia is at like 6 a.m. as well on Wednesday. Oh. It's gonna be, uh, is your trip 38 hours there? <sighs> no, it's a solid six or something. <laughs> six. It's like the, it's Beat like the square child. It's like the square root of your trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically is, isn't it? <laughs> uh, oh. We're supposed to not doing maths on screen. You're doing like square roots. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We said no division oh. and shit. Like, oh my god. Jeez. Uh, Crazy. Ter terrible. Your 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 beautiful lies. But yeah, I got I got 38 hours each direction. I'm not too worried about the one going to Valencia because there's an adventure at the end of it. But when I'm heading home, I'm, that that 30 hours is going to feel like a thousand years. Because the. Uh, because I'm going to want my bed and like my family and everything back again. I just want to be home so badly that then you get oh, like, I just have a day and a half of airports and plane hopping ahead of me to look forward to. One of those oracles goes down, the other one will get away. Banshee cur currently coming up here from Gumiho, so Banshee coming up, Cloak coming up. A few extra gateways also just coming down. Get this set up and ready to go with a third base of trap coming off to the left hand side. I think this is Gumio's opportunity though, you know, charge and plus one armor, they might be finished for the fight, but it's still his real push here with combat shields, with the siege tanks. Yes, okay, he doesn't have stim, but he has two ravens with a lot of energy to back him up as well. He certainly does. And here we go, Gumiho looking for that nice spot for those siege tanks. Traps already moving to engage here, now those phoenixes are going to be very, very crucial in this battle, but the ravens here are very, very, very nasty here to deal with Ooh. the trap and potentially yeah. Not only armor shredder, but also just give spotting range for these tanks who are still getting some nice connections there. Now they got the sentries, I mean, gets them very low. It's a really nice little play as you can see the tanks now move forwards. And Gumiho's really aggressive with this, moving all the way in. All the turns start to drop down. Ooh. Phoenix live from the tanks. It doesn't look as though uh, Gumiho targeted them down this time. Auditor is still helping to push this back, and Archon here will add a lot into this. Let's charge on through with that charge upgrade now completed. Phoenix trying to lift up whichever Marines they can as the Archon falls. That's super close towards the end. The two tanks still standing. Another Warpin should clean this up. I guess you go for this pylon, That's it though. For the Phoenix energy. Uh, he almost has one more lift for, this, for these yeah. tanks, but these tanks are really annoying here. Could target fire that last Stalker down as well. That's a fresh Phoenix here from the Stargate. That one can lift, but doesn't need to. The charge was getting the job done. Oh, and a oh wow, the Banshee in the main base. Oh my god, this is damage from Gumiho. 12 workers killed. He's going to get a few more as well. I mean, 13, 14. I mean, he has to wait for this Oracle to pop out. There is cannons building in the other mineral lines, but this main has taken so much damage to the point where the Banshee just runs out of energy before it gets killed. 18 workers Damn. killed, and look how many Marines from Gumiho are just waiting for a counterattack. They certainly are, but I mean, even with 18 probes going down, Trap still has that third Nexus. So yes, 18 is a lot, but he's only down a handful of probes and he can replenish. It slows him down and gives Gumiho a good footing into the mid game, but it's certainly not game ending, which is weird when you see 18 probes die. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, Gumiho really wasn't in a great position, remember, off the way this game started, so. Yeah. I mean, we talked about him maybe having the opportunity with this army, and he definitely made a good thing, you know, he did a good thing with it. But he still has some work to do to win this game. And that's Trap. We'll be on free bases, you will be set up with this. And, uh, well, these Phoenix have been annoying as well, picking up some Marines where they can. Efficiency may as well be a Phoenix's middle name, because they really do just trade so well, usually, against those units when they're popping out of barracks. Yeah, certainly, and they make they make dropping very awkward as well. But speaking of dropping, Gumiho is going to attempt it. Got a couple of medevacs heading toward the north hand side here, so he's unloading actually. So, not going in. Going to maybe heal up the marines before he goes in, or take the ground path. Oh, catch. 
Don't catch a zealot at least. That's, that's something, but that's telling the phoenixes, hey, I'm over here. Yeah, come get me. It'd be really great if this was just a massive bait, but it's not a massive bait. It's just a regular little drop that gets uh, found. So, at the end of the day, we're just going to be seeing that drop back in the way. First, he comes up from Gummy Ho. He is now down free workers, which is about right. It's about where you want this to be. What's up, Seek and Chill coming in with the Twitch Prime sub as well. Welcome to the Twitch Prime family here on Beastra TV. As you do see, those Phoenix continuing up to the top side. Gummy Ho is once again out on the map. And if you look these Phoenix out of position, you know, you can get a lot done Ooh. on the map. This third CC is pretty important for Gummy Ho's livelihood. And you can see that's been slowed down a little bit more by guy by Traps Phoenixes. The Wing Commander, once again, playing through his name here with plenty of units in the sky. Still producing Phoenixes on that one Stargate. And starting to get more charge lots and even high Templar in as well to complement that charge lot force. These Archons, quite powerful. Gimme Ho's army just getting plus one attack now, but these Zealots, Wardy, they've already got plus two armor. Uh, the Zealots are uh, already pretty beefy here, and I mean, it's again just a repercussion from the early game for Gumi Ho where he wasn't in a great position. He couldn't start his upgrades super quickly. So that's uh, obviously changing things up a little bit now as you see Gumi Ho pulling into the center. Trap has such a huge army off to the left-hand side as well, though, and see Gummy who already set up defensively, taking down these rocks. Fuck this off, gonna kill his own widow mine because, hey, sometimes this has gotta be a little bit of civil warfare, apparently. Oh, widow mine. Yeah, Crushed. I mean, widow mines have killed so many Terran units in the past, might as well be the <laughs> other way around one time. Finally, the widow mine gets friendly fired upon. Revenge. Okay. Revenge for all those games where the widow mines killed my medevac. You got these oracles coming in, and and these two oracles being alive uh, for for so long means they're accumulating energy for so long, and they are just continuing to tag Gumiho here and making it really impossible for him to get away with like a, a backstab maneuver, like a hidden drop, crouching by a hidden drop. It can't it just can't be done. These tags are really really ruining Gumiho's day. Well, mine's gonna be burned here, and they do get some good connections. Look at Ooh. that, and there's the MPs too, by the way. He MPs the Archons behind this. The Force Field's already helping Gumiho, actually. Oh, man. Gumiho wants to leap on this. You can tell he wants to get there before those Zelts get their shields oh, yeah. back. And the choke point will help him do just that for a little while, at least. Oh, man. Yeah, he gets a bunch of those, those uh, Zelts out of the way back. That Stasis Ward gets scanned, and he takes it out. Very nice. Oh, man. Gumiho. But that is still so much here from Trap. And it's starting to get his shields back now. And still he's more AMP energy on these Ghosts. And he's a full set of upgrades ahead, actually, as well, Trap. So that's worth keeping in mind here. Nice lift up using the uh, force field to his advantage again here, Gumi Ho. Just uh, getting his units pulled back and letting the foot of mine travel over to hit those zealots in a big clump. Stems up once again. It's going to have to be a similar maneuver, but the foot is just out of range. Finally gets shot off not mm -hmm. much. Yeah, he wants to get those Widow Mines start to like leapfrog a little bit closer to this ramp here, but that's just gonna le that's gonna basically be the go light there for Trap to collapse on what's remaining of Gumiho's push. He is starting to catch up in army supply and those upgrades. Double forge spinning away back at home for Trap. He's got plus two attack on the way, plus three armor on the way, and uh, more and more Phoenix is joining the fight as well. Oh, Gumiho switches nice. targets here towards that third base. This is all the ghosts. ghosts. Take it out. Yeah, losing the ghost is absolutely huge because that's so much damage that can be done with the MPs. Widow Mines are in a great position, but none of them go off? What? Oh man, well that's why Gimme Ho just loses the game. The Widow Mines do nothing. That's insane. They're like in the midst of all the Zards. I didn't see that happening. Yeah, I thought there was going to be some really nice connections. Yeah, I thought all the Zards were about to die because they're already low and... No, apparently not. Not today. Apparently not. Anton Caridian with the 51 month resub, which is, uh, that's, I mean, that is a lot of months. A five and a one. It's four and a bit years, isn't it? Four and a quarter. Wait, 24. Yes, four, four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. Wow. Damn. Or 51 quarters, you could say. No, that's not right. 51 quarters. Is no. It? No. It's not right. No. It's not right at all. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> four, four times four is uh, four times four is sixteen, I think. So, you're, uh, you, you, I think seven seventeen was what you were looking for there. I just did the quick maps. <laughs> In the bottom left, this is Junair Green Wings's trap. He's going up against the Blue Terran players. It is one one here. It is Gumiho in the upper right hand side. Trap of the very early proxy pylon here. This is just going to be the gateway variety, I believe. Yep, down it goes. He's going to put on some gateway aggression. He is 
is indeed. This is, I like it. Trap changing up. I love the second gate across the map. I think this build this is a really powerful build. It can really fall apart quite quick. Yeah, I mean, if Gumiho goes to that low ground expansion, that's already <laughs> something that Trap's going to be happy to see. They'll be like, yeah, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to be making a, uh, a Zealot and a Stalker pretty shortly here, and you're going to have to deal with both of those with a Reaper. Good luck, have fun. Yeah, Reaper is uh, going to be heading across the map as well, right? Because he has no idea about this, so as a Stalker Corona Boost, there is going to be a Marine building. At least there's a marine on the way, right? Like, it's something. Yeah, yeah. And not a reactor. Yeah. This, this is a reactor. reactor after this. Look. Yeah. yeah, he just dies. Still gonna take some micro of some SCVs. The Zealot has dodged the Reaper too. Reaper goes straight into the main, so he sees a Stalker, but he doesn't even see the lack of a oh, natural he yet, so no he still doesn't know. Oh, now he's got that unit's in his natural. Yeah, now he now he's got that Zealot hacking away. Oh, that Stalker hacking away at him. Now he knows. SCV's uh, uh, Gumiho's taking this. Oh, if we can get that wrap around the SCVs, he'll be all right. He sets up that bunker on the high ground. He's going to desperately try and finish this natural command center so he can lift it up and put it to safety in the main. If this natural gets taken out by Trap, though, he's going to have a very strong start to this game. Oh, I mean, this is going to be so annoying. I mean, if nothing else, he's just continued to delay this for so long. Reactor here could be in some trouble. As you see, the Stalker is low, actually, the Stalker. We'll get one more SCV by uh, killing off the one building the bunker here. And Reactor taking some shots. Cycle on the way is obviously the real way to kind of start properly holding this. Oh, that Reaper. He's so close. Yeah. He really wanted to get that low hit point Stalker. That SCV coming in to try and finish up that bunker. He doesn't quite do it. The next SCV should, though. And Trap is in. He's killed that he's killed that Reactor. And he is in the game. He's in the main of Gumiho. But Gumiho, with that, with that Cyclone coming out, he shuts this down. And the natural never got cancelled. So now he can come down. And yes, he's lost some SCVs. But if the Cyclone and his bio units can hold back and he keeps this natural up, Gumiho can fight back. Oh, three Stalkers, though. And the Reaper traps oh, the Cyclone. Oh, no. Why? Why? Lunch. Oh, that's, oh, that's not pretty. That's not fair. Why would Terran just turn on each other like this, mate? No, that's not how this works. Bros don't do bros like that. That's terrible. That's worse than the Widow Mine killing some of your own stuff. Yeah. Using the Cyclone when you're fighting against Stalkers like this? Well, this sucks because now Gimme Hill can't mine from his natural. He can't build SCVs from his natural. And that means he's going to be taking a lot of economic damage. The reactor blocks the cyclone from coming down the ramp for a moment. And Gimme Hill is just pushed back onto one base. And yes, Trap, his ne Nexus was very late here. But, you know, despite his fine. Nexus being very late, I mean, it's finally coming up. So now, he does have it. Now he can start to use that to his advantage. And, well, I mean, five, four stalkers on the low ground with an adept to shade for vision. That's pretty nice. Rippy gets a couple of kills across the map, though. Going for number three. Yeah, there's no units back at home until that Stalker just got warped in, so it looks like maybe four probe kills here from Gumiho before that Reaper goes home. Nope, just a three, and the fourth uh, just getting damaged a little bit. These these Adepts are going to be very, very annoying, giving him that high ground vision, and the Stalker's just continuing to poke at him. Yeah, going to see a tank on the way up right now from Gumiho as a second. Rax finishes up as well. Ah, it's just so frustrating. I mean, the tank will obviously eventually take back his low ground, but it takes him so long to get there. He lost a depot in the process. He's currently supply blocked. Banshee on the way too. I mean, okay. I like the Banshee. It's a move which really could help, but he doesn't even have the cloak on the way, so... Ah, uh, mm. trap, man. That's been good. Certainly. I mean, if the Banshee catches a mineral line without any units in position, I can see a few probes going down. And it is a flying unit, and there is no Stargate from trap, so there's, uh, there's potential that this Banshee could be very, very annoying. Um, obviously, the, the tech here for Trap is going to be the Twilight Council that Blink finishing up, so maybe he heads down a Templar path here. Yeah. He's got the Robo as well, so he could go in that direction as well. Stimpak is uh, starting up right now, so... I mean, the Bio is getting there, but the Blink... I think the Blink is scary. If Trap didn't have his extra Stalkers at home... I guess two tanks is hard, but uh, I feel as though he could get a lot done in the front. Hmm. Uh, these tanks are gonna are gonna keep them very safe here in this natural. Um, the tanks are starting to shoot away here at those last remaining gateway units of trap from this contain. And that Banshee is heading across the map to see what it can get done now. Uh, this needs to do a fair bit here for Gumi Ho. See, trap is already up six probes and is getting towards a third base. Even killing this probe in that third base location would be nice. Slow that down. Yeah. Yeah, anything Gumi Ho can do right now is almost essential. I mean, again, this Banshee doesn't even have cloak, but... 
Ah, he just has to try to get something. Stalker's in the natural with Blink, of course. Got to remember that. And he will get two of the three volleys that he needs off there. And that's uh, Banshee for now just going to be pushed away. Trap of a Oh, Neil, in. it does die. It oh, dies in the end. That's bad news for giving home. Yeah. He can't afford to lose things, really, especially when they're, uh, you know, 100 gas and 150 minerals is not very good. That Observer from Trap as well, seeing this move out from Gimiho is very, very nice. His units pull back as well as a result, trying to save themselves from Gimiho's little, little move out here. Uh, I'm going to be losing this gateway, but I think this gateway is really a massive issue for him at the moment, as we are going to be seeing. Again, picked away, step back. Yeah, I mean, Stimpak in combat, uh, plus one in the attack, sorry, is about to finish, but again, Trap just has all these, you know, structures already up, his third base about to finish, he has the gateway, it's, uh, he's about to warp in a lot, and when he starts warping in, this could be kind of scary, especially if Gimio's out of well, position not, on the map. He's not going to be able to warp in a ton, because he's only got uh, two pylons on the way, or actually he has a third Nexus going up, so never mind, he's going to have plenty of supply in a second. Nice little blink of harassment here from Trap, he has that warp him as well. Uh, does fly over a turret and takes a bit of damage on that prism as he goes up into the main base. Blinks on in, but one of them got left behind. <laughs> nice prism micro there from Trap. And he's going to need to blink on out of here. That's a lot of fire here from Gimiho. He doesn't have medevac support, but... Um, oops, oops, oops. All right, well, he goes to the recall option instead. Yeah, it feels like it would have been better for him to just run through the bio than blink. Like, maybe he would have lost one stalker yeah. there, but then he loses three like this. Hmm. I would have just, I would have just used Blink to go into the low ground and run away. I think, it, yeah, I, I think initially he was just like a little bit too far up, but I think if you just run into the bio, then Blink, it's fine. Like, I think you lose one Stalker. Yeah. That. Yeah. Interesting moment. Unfortunately. A double forge here from Trap means he's going to start shooting ahead on the upgrades as they come through, even though plus one is already done for Gimiho. Gimiho is just rocking the single engineering base at one upgrade at a time, and like a Chrono Boost means that eventually Trap is going to take the lead. He is starting to get some Immortals out, which is very, very important because he's going to, he knows he's up against Siege Shacks and they are a big thorn in his side with his uh, Stalkers getting very much countered by that Siege Tank tech. Oh, a reacted Liberator is coming out here for Gumiho. He actually only has four Metabacks here, so it's already getting Liberators out. I like it, though. Little Liberators could potentially make him win a fight against an army composition like this, that tra like what Trap has. I think the Marines and the tanks on their own don't do it. I really thought Trap would be like more like swelling up with gateway units right now and like really looking overwhelming, but we actually look somewhat okay. Stalkers blink forwards and they'll try and get a marine. At some point, Gumiho has to realize there's an observer of his army, right? There you go, finds yeah. it right away there. And there's a very obvious uh, thing at that point as well. That's not good. Nice catch on the prism. Really nice because now you can bring his entire army on the map without issue. Now he doesn't have to be afraid of counterattacks. That's so wonderful. Getting rid of the prism really makes you breathe a sigh of relief there as the Terran. He has more oh, yeah. metabacks here with this Liberators as well. Reinforcing with a bunch of Marauders and Marines. Gumiho is going to put on the aggression here, and Trap's going to have to defend. Charge is done, obviously, and he has 1-1 one, one upgrade. So his units have that upgrade advantage for now until 1-1 one, one finishes for Gumiho. Plus one armor nearly nearly finishing up for him here. His tanks are on siege and just using their un DPS to really do a lot of damage here to the army of Trap. Trap backs away just a little bit more. Guardian Shield fades away, and we are going to be seeing Trap kind of wants to take the fight, even if the Liberator is here, he's going oh, to go for it. No. Ah, the Liberators go down quickly at least, but it just feels like there's so much bio as Gumiho. Ah, he's taking a while yeah. to get through the Zealots, but he still will get through there eventually. And Trap blinks away, and I think suddenly Gumiho might have just taken this down. Wow. Yeah, I was saying, I don't know, I felt like that was an overextension there for Trap, and it certainly was in the end. And my fears came true there for Trap as Gumiho takes a pretty huge army supply lead. And there's no 2 2 on the way here for Trap. This is no upgrade advantage anymore. And Gumiho has a lot of Marauders against a very stalker heavy army. He pulls back. The Metavacs are actually very low on energy, so he can't keep healing and stimming in all the time here for these, uh, for these units. So they will take damage. Uh, he doesn't have any more Metavacs on the way either, I think. He's just making Liberators here. Liberators are very powerful, though. Yeah, there's really not much else. Uh that Trap can really do right now. I think he was trying to take a fight before Gumiho got into like a choke point with the Liberators, but it just didn't work at all. I mean, there was just no and there's just no way Trap had enough, and, and this was the issue: losing the War Prism, losing his potential to counterattack and buy time in other ways. This obviously put him into a really difficult position, and again, kind of forced into a fight which he really didn't want to take—a fight which really didn't do him justice. 
And it looks like Trap really wants to slow things down here and make him and, and slow Gumiho down, get him away from his army, away from his Nexus, because he's trying to get up into 2 2. And if that finishes, if he gets given that time, then potentially he can take that fight here against Gumiho's army, which is so much higher in supply right now. Actually, even 2 2 might not be enough. He's up that much army supply, and he's just rallying so many down, units down here in the map. Multiple Liberators, lots of Marauders, lots of Bio. And uh, we see him pull back. Looks like Trap's going to get some of this map back away from the Terror, and he feels like he doesn't have the ability to fight anymore. Yeah, I mean, Gumiho's is going to keep uh, pulling backwards and kiting away here. He is taking some damage from some Zealots in the mineral line, so at this point, Trap is, you know, getting a bit of kind of, you know, a bit of a stance back in the game. 2 2 will finish for him, right? So he yep. is going to have upgrades here, he is going to have advantages. Is it enough? Mm, I mean, he's got an Archon, so his splash damage is looking okay. He's getting his Immortal count up. I mean, maybe. You know, I, I have a little bit of hope. I do a too. Bit of hope. We have a we have a little bit of a lull in the action here, as both both players are sort of uh, you know their armies are very far away from each other. So I'm just gonna apologize that we didn't call you out earlier because we were just so focused on this game. Follow Icarus, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. Welcome to the Base Trade TV fam. Welcome. You you subscribed at an amazing point of action. It was, uh, you did. Right Shame on you. Shame on you. Pick pick a downtime, please. Think, think for 90 seconds into the future better next time, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Try and imagine what's going to... It's TVP. Come on. How yeah. hard can it be to guess 90 seconds into the future? You just look at the Terran yeah, Apparently quite hard. <laughs> Run it through your head a couple times. You got it. Yeah, it's quick maths. You can, you can do this. So it's going to be Templar Tech for the first time here for Trap. We haven't actually seen many storms at all, I feel like, in any of these TVPs. Because the players have just been going for Disruptors or for uh, Archons and Charge Lots and stuff. It's uh, it's actually crazy that we've seen so many TVPs and we're about to see our first storm of the day now. Like, this should have come yeah. down like ages ago. Right now, Gummy Host starts to take this fight trap again. All the Widow Mines go off on the army this time around. Zealots charging in. Finally, we're going to be seeing the storms dropping. Just wards the Terran away and trap. We'll have a good hold here, even killing a couple of Widow Mines towards the end with these storms. Nearly calling all of them, only one of them left. The Liberators also took a beating there from those storms, and also the Widow Mines, of course, helping him out and getting a bit of damage on those medevacs and those Liberators at the front lines. The instant Ghost Academy is as soon as, soon as he sees those, uh, those High Templar there from Gumiho. And his 2 2 is about to finish up, so his army has fighting power here against Trap's army. And I actually really love that he's also getting attack upgrades for his Liberators. A lot of Terrans forget to do that. You start to get up to plus one attack, it helps the Liberators out a fair bit. But when you get to plus two attack for those Liberators, then they can two shot those. Uh, there's stalkers in there. That's uh, not a bad situation to be in. Oh, actually, the stalkers have upgrades, so maybe not. Whoop. Nice playing. Again, great play by Trap here, making the most of every single one of his units. It feels like in each of these fights lately. Uh, at the moment, though, Gumiho has a good uh, little bit of momentum, and Trap is low on storm energy. His high temple haven't had a break from the last fight. So oh, that's storms, a nice storm. Though. Yeah, they're really starting to hit down. They're really starting to deal some damage, but he's still not going to be able to hold this base. So Gumiho pushes through here. Trap is forced back to the three bases, but the Zealots across the map doing damage as well. They certainly are, and Gumiho is starting to bleed out SCVs here as they turn and fight against those uh, those charge lots with the bio reinforcements coming in to help. Widowmind does a bit of damage to this Archon, of course, that's Widowmind damage is a spell, so it doesn't care about those shields. There's a lot of damage to that Archon there. Uh, Gumiho getting shoes. that Nexus was a really, really huge moment there. Three bases each apiece. Uh. Blinks in to the Liberator, but there's actually a Widow Mine underneath as well, so it takes oh, a bit more damage. Yeah, nice. Again, Gumiho, now he's got 2 2. You can see him starting to trade a lot better again compared to the fight he took with. Not the fight that he took, but the fight that Trap forced, basically, when he had the upgrade lead once more. Nicely done once again. Just gets another Immortal Low. Forces a Storm out that doesn't really connect on anything. As the Stalkers blink, he'll turn and fight just a little bit and get back towards the look at many reinforcements. He has so much available to him. And I think Trap realizes he has to back away, especially because he has no prison to reinforce with. Also lost a few zealots there, attacking towards that third, not finding any SCVs this time. Uh, Trap is still sending, he's just warping in units back at that third nexus and walking them across the map. A lack of warp prism here, like since he lost that force, first warp prism, it feels like maybe he has PTSD. Oh my god, nice play there with that medevac. Wow, Flanking the EMP. Every single high Templar. Well, what do you do now? Because there's no reason this Terran army is going to stop stimming at you. All your high Templar are out of energy. Maybe you kind of recall now and you just morph them into Archons, but... Oh my god, what a play by Gumiho, and that might just secure him in the series here as he pushes through a cancel on the does. Nexus. 
I mean, there's no way. It doesn't right. They're so far away from Storm Energy. I think there's one Storm available. Or maybe one Ooh. more on top of this one. So there is still a couple. Uh, I think there's one more to the north. I mean, there's also yeah. EMP still available, too. Most important thing, though, Gumiho takes down that fourth base again. Eventually, Trap will be starved out of this game, if nothing else. Definitely. This Observer for Trap seeing what he's up against, and it is quite a bit. He's up a lot of army supply here. And neither player is getting 3-3 right now. They're so focused on getting the armies up and keeping tabs on their opponent's movements. Personal cloaking on the way for the ghost as well, so potentially they could uh, get those easier EMP flanks. But I was just to address, like, normally we see Protosses load up their War Prism with High Templar and, and flank Terran armies and get those nice juicy storms. I've never seen a ghost drop, dropped out of a medevac to, to flank EMP and army. It's like the Terran version. Yeah. It's uh, it's tough to get off, right? Because if the medevac gets feedback, that could go wrong. If the stalkers blink on it too quickly, then you lose it. It's high risk, but such high reward. I mean, I can't not having energy Whoa. at all is just amazing. It meant that he could get that fourth base. And speaking of fourth base, there's another attempt at the top left here by Trap. He tried a different location. This Marine of Gumiho, though, he sees it. So now he's got a new target. And that that fourth is a lot a lot harder for Trap to hold. Did the main base... Has the main base been floated out here for Gumiho? Where did it go? It has... It's just now moving past the natural. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, for a moment, I was like, did he lose his third was. base and he got retaken as the main? I was like, oh, <laughs> dear. <laughs> Great <laughs> observing. Oh, now we have High Templars in Warp Prism as well. So both of these guys yeah, trying to pull off some fancy stuff. Good. Nice feedback. Good, feedback. Good Storm as well before losing the High Templar. The best he could do with it right there. Just this clash of the players on these ramps. Neither player wanting to move into the other just yet. Neither player wanting to commit. Yeah. And that's a, such a nice, such a strong thing to do as Terran. Like if you see that High Templar, you see the Protoss' wheels spinning when those High Templars split from the pack and they move forward. And that's when you grab a few Marauders and you send them forward because the Marauders can deal with a bit of bad weather. It's the Marines that are the squishy ones. Yeah, Marines are uh, disappearing in those storms. Marauders do last a little bit. And we oh, just talked about... Oh! oh! Storms. Looking great there, actually. Yeah, that's a new storm there. Nice uh, catch as well by Trap to the top side as Gumiho is pushed away. Unable to get towards the fourth base, which he was attempting to drop here. So that's nice by Trap. He's got to remember that now Gumiho knows his army's up here. He will be able to. Uh, he will have to start moving something around to the bottom side because it's very likely Gumiho does move in in this position. Yeah, Gumiho is just trying to send a small force to try and do damage to that fourth base. But Trap read him like a book, interrupted oh, him. Oh, ghost! Ghost and no detection. Oh no! I mean, one goes down right now, oh, yeah. but uh, here come the observers. the observers. There's an EMP available. Oh, he has to recall into the natural. Nexus will not go down, but this bio army will have to keep fighting. But there's the storms. Oh, oh my God, Gumiho! Massive there. Yeah. And he's out of Marines, I think. So the prison's going to survive as well. No way. Well, prison actually bringing two mortals further forward to try and catch those retreating marauders on two hit points as well. How much more painful can he get? I mean, the medevacs Dude. at least surviving because there's not that many stalkers here. There's a couple of workers going down to Club Ghost top left hand side now. Again, Club Ghost <laughs> causing a lot of issues. We do see. Marines are here, Widow Mines are here, and this might be as far as Trap can go. This game is crazy. The ghost coming in from the south hand side, and they go for the big EMPs there, even undetecting those, uh, those, uncloaking those observers. You don't see naked observers every day, but there we go. They get their cloak back. Now they look normal. Yeah, observers don't take their clothes off for anybody. Down. This cloaked ghost killed 11 probes. Just shift yeah. clicks through a bunch of probes. He's having a great time on the upper left hand side. As Trap, though, is still fighting here in the center. It's still 2-2 two -two versus 2-2 two -two upgrades. Oh, Neither nice. player with the money to go into a final upgrade here because, I mean, it's just been oh. one of those games where it's just been so, so crazy. And there's just not been a moment for these players to spend money on anything other than army yeah. units for a while. Once again, like, just, uh, yeah, you, you just hit the nail on the head. Neither player can is even getting 3-3 right now. Just They're just thinking about trying to keep on tabs of the movements of the armies, keep on tabs of oh having God. their army production up, like, not missing production cycles. This ghost gets a high Templar and ghost. a bunch of probes. 24, like, this, 25. Oh, this, this might be the GG ghost. This, this is such incredible GG damage. Ghost. I mean, I honestly, Dude, it could it's, be. It's actually going insane. Right now it's on 28 kills, still alive. Here we go, a fight breaks out again. This time gonna be her space to work with. Still has the MPs to drop. Hasn't dropped them still. Man, there's just He's no detection. The there is just no detection. Finally the ghost went down, Snipes. but... Wow, it's over. Gets that high tempo. Surely it's, it's over. over. Trap is yeah, gonna fall. Yeah, finally done it. What a what a crazy game. That was so sick. Definitely my favorite game of the night. Gumiho getting himself a well-earned series win there with the 2-1 which puts them in a pretty good spot here heading into our last series.